you question you, you know, that's how we should proceed. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, Whoever is a guide, I request kindly pardon me. I just advised, sir. Please. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, I mean, certain short yes, forms sir. are not. Explained. Yes, sir. Please. Because even in the theory paper, they write, sir. We do not know what is there. You started, huh? Oh, you when, I was, when I was in England, there was. I request uh, faculty alone to unmute and speak, sir. There will be a lot of disturbance. Very sorry, muted everyone. Please unmute, sir, faculty. And uh, so, with the, can we Ajay start, sir? Ajit, sir, was saying something about England. Uh, uh, very sorry, sir. I said, uh, sorry. Some there, was a, there was a term called F double O O S H written on the casualty card. And that okay. meant double mm. O O S H. Mm. Fall on outstretched hand. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, sir. Can I will, sir? Please take over. You are muted, sir. Can I will? Good evening, friends. Uh, uh, warm welcome to invited faculty on behalf of all our academic committee members. Uh, we have two important cases today for discussion. I also warmly welcome the students and residents who are here and in the YouTube. Uh, the oral cancer case is uh, to be presented by Dr. Dirain Gupta. It's been kindly contributed by Dr. Naveen uh, from Ames Jodhpur. And then uh, the other case is uh, once again advanced carcinoma breast, Dr. Dharani Rajeshwaran. Is kindly contributed by Dr. S.P. Gayatri, ma'am, and from Professor R. Condenser's unit, Madras Medical College. We have uh, three eminent invited faculty, Dr. Shabi Ahmed uh, from MLN Medical College, Prayagraj, Professor Shiram Batsar from KMC Mangalore, and we have Professor Manjunath Kotenawar from BM Patil Vijaypura. And of course, we have our uh, eminent faculty with us uh, all the time. So, we warmly welcome everyone and uh, the first case will be presented by Dr. Dirain Gupta from Ames Jodhpur. So as you are aware, the invited faculty takes priority for questions. Of course, our faculty will also chip in with their thoughts and comments. So the candidate will be allowed to present through the history without stopping, without interruption. And of course, come back on every slide to have discussion. And then after that, you allow the candidate to present through the clinical finding then we can take for discussion. We have one hour time left for each cases. So kindly take over. Good luck, Dr. Dirain. Please introduce your unit chief, your head of the department and start your presentation. Good luck to you, Dr. Dirain. You are in mute mode, Dr. Dirain. You please start share your PowerPoint, Dr. Dirain. Yes, sir. Good luck, ma. Is it visible, sir? Yes, you are good to go. Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, eminent faculty. I am Dr. Dhiren, uh, working under Dr. Naveen Sharma in Ames Jodhpur in Department of General Surgery. Uh, today, I am going to present a case on a carcinoma of oral cavity. A 62-year-old gentleman, uh, Hindu by religion, from Darbhanga district, Bihar, is a uh, farmer by occupation from last 40 years and belongs to a low socioeconomic strata. The patient presented with, a, with an ulcerating growth in right buccal mucosa from last two months. Patient was apparently asymptomatic three months back when he developed loosening of teeth in right side of lower jaw. After this, he developed an ulcer at the same place, which was non-healing and rapidly progressed to an ulcerating growth involving the right lower jaw. This growth was insidious in onset, associated, associated with excessive salivation and uh, with difficulty in articulation of speech and phonation. There was no complaint of fever, there was no complaint of pain over the growth, there was no history of trauma, there was no complaint of bleeding from the growth, there was no complaint of any pus discharge or foul smelling breath, there was no complaint of difficulty in swallowing. 
there was no complaint of difficulty in opening of mouth or or, or any hoarseness of voice there was no complaint of cough breathlessness or chest pain there was no history of loss of appetite or loss of weight in past history there was no existing uh, comorbidities and there was no history of any chronic illness or previous hospital admission in personal history patient was a uh, is a chronic tobacco chewer and smoker from last 30 years and an occasional alcohol drinker from uh, the similar duration he does not take betel nut patient is a non vegetarian by diet patient is having a normal bowel and bladder habit patient is having a normal sleep cycle patient has three siblings and four children none of them had any similar now in the past Dearan, sir, your summary, Dearan. Yes, sir. A 62-year-old male presented with an uh, ulcerating growth over right side of lower jaw from last two months, with uh, difficulty in speaking and excessive salivation from it. Dearan, okay. I just want to ask why you wanted to ask uh, hoarseness of voice and uh, breathlessness and chest pain. Can you put the picture so that everyone can? Yes, sir. Uh, picture. Yes, sir. Sir, but sir, Sri Ram, sir, please think. My history wise, uh, why he wanted to ask? Uh, why the the uh, why he wanted to ask? Uh, history of hoarseness of voice. Yes, sir. So these all features uh, indicates toward the advanced malignancies, sir, if they are present. Okay, then breathlessness and chest pain. Sir, uh, oral cavity cancers. If they are there, the most common site of metastasis is lung. So to okay. rule out. Any yeah. other reason for breathlessness, breathlessness. and uh, fever, more, chest pain? Yeah, more common reason. More common reason. Okay. They don't uh, metastasize so much. Oral cavity doesn't. Not known for metastasis. It metastasizes only when there is a immunosuppression. Right. Immunosuppression yes, patient, uh, they may, it may cause uh, lungs lung spread. Otherwise, like sir told, uh, uh, other what is the other common reason? Uh, most common mean, reason most for common someone reason. with oral cancer having chest pain, breathlessness, breathlessness, fever. How that issue is relevant for you? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Previously, when people had dental caries, what did they present with usually before the antibiotic era? So abscesses, gum abscesses, lung abscess. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they, lung they abscesses. Have, they will have a bronchopneumonia in these patients. Very bronchopneumonia, commonly. lung abscesses. That's, 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 that's what we usually think. In Doctor Dhiran, age level, my dear, can I ask you? Doctor Dhiran, yes sir. I don't tell the diet as non-vegetarian diet. A human being cannot be non-vegetarian diet. You can say both vegetarian and non-vegetarian on mixed diet. Right? Yeah, vegetarian mixed diet. Mixed diet you can say or vegetarian no non-vegetarian both veg and non-veg you can say. But don't mention it non-vegetarian diet. Okay. Okay, Dhiran, you've said about family history, no history of similar. Uh, oral cavity cancer. So, which do you think would run in the family? Which type of malignancy runs in family? Oral malignancy, in specific. So, though the oral cavity cancers are usually somatic uh, or solitary in origin, but like very few incidents, like less than two percent, are uh, this familiar in origin, sir. If the siblings also have got habit of chewing tobacco or smoking BD cigarette etc., it can run in the family. It depends on that social habits, isn't it? Right. May not be just related to only genetic factors. Sometimes it can be because of social factors. Also. Social factors, isn't it? Right, sir. And there are like uh, you are sorry. Yes, sir. There are you are saying patient was a continuous tobacco chewer, but not the uh, betel nut. Why you are very particularly mentioning that? Uh, uh, or the betel nut is a quite common cause of oral cavity malignancies because of this uh, ericolin in it. Like, hmm. so tobacco uh, is not the cause. No, it is also a cause, sir. Tobacco, alcohol, uh, betel nut, all other causes. What, what is the mechanism of tobacco causing cause? No? Sir, uh, constant chewing it causes a constant trauma to the though, and also it causes D DNA alteration uh, in the. 
area, local area, field effect it causes, sir. Dhiran, uh, one question from my side. Uh, did you, you mention the habit of keeping that in particular place? Very important question you have to ask. Because you mentioned all this chest pain and all that thing, but you know, there's a typical way in which people mm -hmm. keep that in certain area. What is that called as? Yes, sir. Uh, like uh, this tobacco chewing, they usually put in this uh, ginger beer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Only. Correct. What, what is that called as? You keep no inside for some. Ginger beer, sir. No, no, yes. it is what it is called as. <laughs> sir is asking what it is called as. You keep Important, it there. No? Uh, habit, you know, quid. Not heard of the word quid, quid. Quid. Not quit. Quid. Quid. They'll, they'll quid. They'll keep overnight also. For 10, 5 hours, 6 hours like that. So that is a particular way. You know, there's an Indian cancer actually. Typical. They keep it in that area. And they maybe 3 times, 4 times, 5 times, 6 times in the fields work. they work and even night also. So ah, yeah, there are many patients sir, who keep even uh, while sleeping hours also. All night <laughs> they keep that quid. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, adding, on to, adding on to the question on that uh, pneumonia, what uh, Dr. Rajiv sir and uh, Shirambat told, remember, very often you people do the mistake of telling aspiration pneumonia. Remember, that probably will happen in the posterior one-third growth or where they cannot swallow. Here, it is more of a malignant particle. You inhale, you know, inhale. When there is so much sepsis inside the oral cavity with this foul odor, feet, all that smell, halitosis. That inhalation itself can produce a kind of a you know pneumonia and etc. That is what you should remember. Don't tell aspiration, especially this type of case. Okay, please continue, sir. Uh, here are a few questions yes, uh, which you've missed in your history. One is you have not asked for whether he used the dentures or not. His mouth opening, right? Yes. Mouth opening. He has told, I think, sir, where I saw. Well, yes, I have uh, told there is no complaint of mouth opening and I have examined okay. the mouth opening in physical examination. Okay. Hmm. And uh, uh, whether he has, he uses dentures or not. Right, okay. sir, right. I, I, I forgot to ask that. We'll keep in mind. I think this uh, history of hoarseness of voice, it is uh, Dr. Dhiren. Yes, sir. You are told no history of hoarseness of voice. How to co collaborate with this, your, your case is, sometimes this oral malignancy can give you, you know, it can, they, they can cause cervical lymphoid and lymphadenopathy, metastasis, isn't it? Is that metastatic lymph node invade the recurrent laryngeal nerve that can give right to worsens of voice? In that's, that what, that's what Dhiran, you should be able to correlate when you ask some history. How, how, how exactly relevant to that particular case? You should be able to give a reason for that history. Specific history. Yeah, whatever negative, negative history you tell, you should be able to substantiate that. It should be relevant to the case. Okay? Right, sir. Okay. Dhiran, what is that? Uh, you, you mentioned something about that uh, field cancerization. What do you mean by that? So field cancerization uh, occurs like multiple synchronous lesion in a similar lesion. Dysplastic could be or cancerous. But you are uh, not asked any questions related to that. What is the percentage normally is a field cancerization? The second malignancy can be there in the oral malignancy? 1 to 10 percent, sir. Okay. So then you are not talked about dysphagia. You are not talked about other uh, organs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The history you are not eliciting. You are confining only to your oral cavity. And you are talking about that, but uh, the related, uh, remotely related cervical load with the host yes. voice, you are, but dysphagia, you are not asking yes. for that. Okay. Yes, sir. You said to increase uh, salivation, no? Right. Why, salivation do you get salivation? Why do you get increased salivation? Sir, uh, because of this uh, malignancy in the mouth, patient has constant irritation. Which release, which releases the causes the glands to excessively salivate, okay. and also difficulty in swallowing. And yes, sir. Uh, uh, Dhiran, you said there's no bleeding, so such a yes, large sir. also. I, I would expect some sort sort of sometimes blood stained saliva to be there. I mean, uh, right, sir. I also expected that, but the patient doesn't provide a history. Also, on examination, it doesn't bled. Okay. So, what about your pain? Have... Any ear pain? Did you uh, ask for that? I asked for that, but uh, like yeah. it is more common in uh, floor of mouth or tongue malignancy. When the oh, you, I mean, by history, you can't. You, you, I mean, that's on examination. 
Yes, sir. Yes. But sir. in history, I think you should in any oral cavity you must ask for ear pain. Okay. Yes, sir. Ear pain and throat pain, sir. Also, uh, whether he could he can move his tongue properly, whether his speech is affected, all these things have to come out. Okay. Whether his mast mastication is normal. Uh, sir, so mastication. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Do we? I haven't asked about that also, sir. Yes, that is a very important ulcer, large ulcer you are having. Yes, uh, you have said that's a chronic person. So that is more related instead of talking very remote possibility of breathlessness. Yes, yes, that can you can talk, but that is a comes last. But uh, direct what is related with oral cavity you must mention more because mm -hmm. oral cavity and if you are not saying something about the ear pain, that is very grossly mistake because definitely you can have multiple sources through which you can have a ear pain. Mm -hmm. Doctor Diren. Yes, Can you tell me what are the causes for difficulty in opening of the mouth in such cases? Yes, sir. The benign, uh, the prim oral submucous fibrosis, sir. Right. Uh, then there could be this this malignancy only causing the mechanical effect to produce less mouth opening, sir. Right. Mm. Any oral malignancy is infiltrating into any muscles. Trismus sir, causing trismus sir. It could cause trismus. Like which 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 muscle, muscle is responsible for opening? And sir, which mesenter, mesenteric sir, for closing. Mesenter, mesenter is not for opening though. Which muscle is mainly involved? Uh, sir, lateral and medial pterygoid sir. Yeah, in CA tongue, medial pterygoid muscle. Isn't it? Pterygoid. Like this CA peak or CA buccal mucosa can even do buccinatal muscle. Isn't it? That comes with the cause for difficulty in opening of the mouth. Okay, Dhiran. Thank you, sir. Continue. Should we go proceed for examination, sir? Yeah, please. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <clears throat> On in physical examination, patient was examined with consent in a well-lit room. Patient was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. Patient is moderately built with a weight of 60.8 kgs and a BMI of 20.65. There was a and large right sided level 1b and level 2 lymph nodes in the neck. There was no pallor, ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, or pedal edema. Patient was afebrile, having a pulse rate of 74 per minute, which was regular with, and was having a good volume. Blood pressure was 128 by 86 millimeter of mercury, taken in the right arm at the level of heart in a sitting position. The respiratory rate was 14 per minute. On local examination, during inspection, the patient was able to open his mouth uh, at the, uh, th of three finger breadth. There was poor oral, poor, poor oral hygiene with stained teeth. There was a five cross four centimeters ulcer proliferative growth involving the right lower alveolus, GBS, uh, gingivo buccal sulcus, and right buccal mucosa, extending from premolar to third molar. The retromolar trigone was free. Growth has well defined margins with inverted edges. The base was granulated with whitish flex and pool saliva over it. There was no active bleed or discharge present. There was no discolored patches were found inside uh, the oral cavity. Lips, commissures, gums, tongue, floor of the mouth, palate, and the contralateral left side buccal mucosa was normal. Uvula was in midline. Partial pillars were normal. Tongue protrusion and mobility was normal with no deviation. The dental formula for the patient was on left side, uh, left upper 2122, left lower 2122, right side upper 2122, and, and right side lower uh, 2110. On palpation, there was no rise in local temperature. The swelling, uh, the growth was non tender. In, uh, the size of the swelling was 5 plus 4 centimeter, with irregular, which was uh, irregular in shape, and the extent was from premolar to uh, third molar. The growth was hard in consistency and does not bleed on touch and was fixed to mandible. The surrounding induration was felt up to 1 centimeter. The rest of the mandible appears smooth on palpation. On examination of neck, there was hard, non tender, mobile lymph node non matted of size 1.5 cross 1.5 centimeters was palpable at the level 1b and level 2 on right side. The overlying surface was smooth and the skin was normal.
rest of the systemic examination in uh, one normal no abnormality was found Yeah, go ahead. Tell us the, the summary. Yes, sir. A 62-year-old male with a complaint of ulcerative proliferative growth in right uh, alveolus and GBS from two months. The growth was insidious in onset and was progressive in nature. Was associated with excessive salivation and difficulty in phonation. There was no history of pain or bleeding from the growth. There was no history of loss of appetite or loss of weight. On examination, there was an ulcerative proliferative growth of size 5 to 4 cm involving the right lower GBS, right molar trigon, uh, Right tratomolar trigon was free. Growth was hard in consistency and was not bleeding on touch. It was associated with enlarged right-sided level 1B and level 2 lymph node of size 1.5 centimeters. Dhiraj, uh, you said the local rise of temperature, uh, yeah. is it from outside or inside? I am get confused. Sir, uh, inside or in, sir uh, bimineral palpation was from outside only. No, I mean, why do you want a local rise of temperature and also mm -hmm. protective growth of uh, oral cavity? Oral cavity, I don't know, usually difficult. I mean, I mean, Unless it comes out into the skin, you know, skin, then you can from outside, you can check. But inside the oral cavity, raise a local rise of temperature. And suppose the temperature raise, what would you think of? I mean, so difficult uh, test, but still. Very difficult. I mean, not, not required. Right. Can you go to the inspection slide, though? Yes, sir. You said that it is up to the tad molar, the ulcer is extending. Then how do you say that uh, retromolar trigon is not it's involved? Not involved. What is the boundary of uh, retromolar trigon? Sir, the ramus of the mandible, the third molar in front, and the uh, buccal mucosa and facial pillars behind, sir. It is a triangular area behind the third molar. Okay. So you, uh, you said your lesion goes up to the tad molar. Yes, sir. Then how do you say that uh, retromolar trigon is free? So the growth was like uh, the. You could, the you could, uh, whether you could be able to feel, uh, feel retromolar trigon in, uh, separately from the growth, uh, from the outermost part of the margin, posteriormost part margin of the growth. Yes, sir. It was like I, it, I would, I was able to palpate it, sir. You could insinuate your finger in between. You could, yes, sir. You could get the entire margin of the uh, retromolar trigon and growth. There is a gap. That's what uh, yeah, you are uh, I was able to go behind the third molar and palpate the retromolar trigon area uh, and the margin boundary, sir. But what sir is asking, because it's so big, it's almost occupying the entire buccal mucosa, okay. probably yes. extending to the upper uh, gingival, uh, gingival, gingival and lower gingival part. Yes, sir. It, it is not the whole of trigon. It is at least it is entering into the trigon area. So I mean, you cannot say that the trigon is free at this moment. Probably, I mean, you have personally examined, but it's right. very difficult right. to say at this moment. Right, sir. Is yeah. it a, also a proliferative lesion or ulcerative lesion it is? Because you said there is a cleft is there. And the whitish gra tissue is there. White is Show us the picture, please, Jiren. Yes, sir. This was from inside, sir. Do you have a close-up picture of this? Uh, it's not visible. You don't see the... Yeah, it's uh, not very clear. This is the presentation. Yeah, the skin and, from... Is, is it normal, the outside, like, the skin over the... This, uh, uh, this water. Dira, look at this figure. Compared to opposite side. Uh, right side, there is a fullness. Probably a soft tissue is not. Probably the skin, you have to tell whether you'll be able to uh, feel it separately, independent, because uh, definitely there is a difference in the skin outside, outside in the cheek. And the swelling is so big, submandible region. You said 1.5 centimeter. Yeah, have you measured it? Are you sure? Lymph node was uh, like palpable 1.5 centimeter. Dira, you, even now you can take that uh, small picture of the inside oral cavity, make it big and show us. You can show us. It's not yes, difficult. You yes. just Yes, uh, no, minimize, you can show it. Show it to us. Minimize that. Go out of slideshow. Yes, now we enlarge that. Make it big. Some more. No problem. Some more. Yeah, now you go to slideshow. Like that, you can do. Uh, so, so we'll get some idea. Show slideshow now. Again, no, no it's okay. Uh, Dylan, what's the importance of size here? What size do you think would be? Yes, yes. This is important of size. Better, yeah. There is cleft is there. Yes, sir. At this posterior liver tet. Yeah. What's the importance of oh, size okay. here? Sir, uh, size. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, T1, 
sir it uh, helps in staging of the cancer like in p1 it is less than 2 cm no no that's two... fine that's fine everything is fine by yes, till what size are you comfortable and till what size of the of the tumor you start getting uh, you start thinking it's going to be difficult sir for like uh, 2 to 4 cm cancer with node negative disease we can no no, no. just 4 cm anything less more than 4 cm becomes difficult yes sir in oral cavity okay anything for cm yeah here and here in oral cavity the basic definition of explanation of the ulcer remains the same you your pg you have to say the location and extent very very important here both direction anterior and posterior as well as you know vertical so both direction one you only made one statement hard inconsistency yes sir you, i think whether you felt the bone itself and to telling us hard inconsistency is it is it right on the mandible gingival sulcus you said Yes, sir. Ginger muscle so, surface. Edge, you you are not mentioned about the edge at all. Only you said, uh, only you said local raise of temperature. That is not. That is only for swelling, sir. Not for ulcer. Hmm? The tumor is arising from the alveolar surface, not yes. the ginger muscle surface. Yes, it looks like. Yes, sir. I have mentioned that uh, uh, it is involving alveolus. Yes. Uh, lower alveolus, GBS, and right buccal mucosa. Correct. And the growth has well-defined margins with inverted edges, sir. Okay. Okay. Base is the finding the which you would do under inspection or palpation. Sir, uh, floor is on inspection. Yeah. Base, uh, base is on palpation, sir. So granulation tissue is in the floor or base? <laughs> so uh, floor, floor, sir. Floor. You should not you do such a mistake. Base was okay. granulated. Base was granulated. That's entirely wrong granulated. sentence. Right. Just uh, sorry, sir. Dheeraj, is it infiltrated in the masseter or outside of there? No, sir. It doesn't look like it. How do you know it is a saliva, not the serous discharge? Uh, sorry, sir? You are, say, you are saying it's an alcinoproliferative lesion. Now you are yes. making a statement it is a pooled saliva. Why not it is a, just a serous discharge from the ulcer? Discharge from the ulcer. Already sloughed feet there, dead tissue is there. Yes, sir. So it cannot be a saliva. It must be only a discharge. Discharge, yes, sir. What about the bone, Dhiran? Uh, 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 the overlying bone was thickened, sir. Mandible thickening is there? Mandible yeah. thickening was there, sir. You have compared to opposite side? Yes, sir. Tenderness is there? No, sir. There was no tenderness, sir. No pain, no tenderness, sir. Dhiran, I am interested in, in the depth of, the, of your growth. Right? That is important. So, yes. how will I mean? How do you assess clinically the depth of the of the of your growth, sir? So, uh, by making the patient uh, acting the buccinator muscle and masseter muscle, sir, we could see if that uh, the muscle is involved or not. That will give us some indication of the depth of the. In so, were, were the buccinators involved? Were the was the skin involved? So patient was able to whistle, sir. Patient was uh, able to like uh, tighten his uh, masseter muscle, sir. So on so clinical exam, he was able to do that. But okay. was there any more any any uh, intrinsic mo mobility of the growth? So the growth was not mobile, sir. None, none at all. None, none, none at all, sir. So when he moved the the growth, was the skin getting distorted from outside? Could you see the skin getting distorted when he moved the growth? Definitely. I have right. noticed that, sir. Right. So this that is important. This shows there is uh, skin. I mean, up to the skin, it has come. The, yeah, it looks. Sick. That's why I'm asking you. Definitely, the skin looks seems to be involved. Skin is also getting involved here. So if you compare opposite side, obviously it is there outside. Yes. Sir. And you are not given adequate findings from outside actually. Only whatever right. findings you have added is only from inside. You are not There's given. There seems to be some skin outside. changes, some darkening yes. of the skin. So Very you well. have to see if you move the 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 the, lump, the tumor, does the skin get distorted or not? Does the cheek get distorted or not? Right, sir. Outside right, cheek, important. cheek yeah. well, definitely there's a lot of difference. You compare to opposite side. Look at that. Right, sir. <coughs> the this ipsilateral side skin was a redder, erythematous, and darker. Right, sir. 
So if you see a swelling on the outer aspect of the buccal mucosa or a cheek like this, sir, what other two, three possibilities consider? Uh, uh, basal cell carcinoma, if there is also over outside of the skin. No, no, not yeah. basal cell. In your case only, okay. if there's, you are seeing a very obvious swelling, what uh, Sri Rambat has been telling from beginning, what are two, three possibilities you will consider? Suppose your face is swollen. What are the things you will consider? Sir, firstly, sir, the huh? oral cavity carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, sir. No, it, no, no. Sir, it's asking. No, no. It's not, not asking that. Okay, inflammatory. I'll give a clue to you first. Can it be an inflammatory edema? Okay, I mean, I know. Yes, Can it, it be, be lymphatic edema? Such yes, a sir, large nodes be. you are telling, no? So, such a Lymphatis large nodes. Could be. Yes, sir. Can it be tumor itself coming out slowly? You said skin is erythematous. Next will be orocutaneous fistula. So you have to keep your mind in that direction and think. Right, okay, sir. right. Please go ahead. Mobility of the tongue was normal, no? Yes, the mobility of the tongue was normal, sir. So, what will happen if there is a hypoglossal nerve palsy? Sir, in hypo, uh, the tongue would deviate towards the opposite side, sir. Opposite side? No. Same side or right. opposite side? Same side or opposite side? Ipsilateral side, sir. Ipsilateral side. Wasting white look. Why? Sir, because Wait, of the decussation, decussation of the fibers, sir, the one side of the muscle uh, push. Tongue muscle pushes the tongue towards the opposite side. So if the ipsilateral muscle get uh, paralyzed, the opposite side muscle will push the tongue towards the opposite side. What's the Which opposite? muscle is involved? Which muscle <clears throat> is involved? The myoglossal uh, and this hyoglossus muscle. What, what is the largest muscle of the tongue? What is the main muscle of the tongue? Extrinsic muscle of the tongue. Extrinsic mm -hmm. and yeah. intrinsic. Extrinsic Over muscle, extrinsic main muscle, extrinsic. bulk of the muscle. Hyoglossus, sir. No. Shape muscle. muscle. Fan shaped muscle. Genio classes. Let's from the genial tubercles comes like a fan. Yes, a genial process. So the function is pushing the tongue to the opposite side. So that is when it's lost, it will come to the same side. What is that? You know, heard that the term wheel varrow varrow phenomena? No, sir. Never heard, sir. Okay. It is a rotatory movement. The muscle is not moving straight forward. And that will be wasting also after the tongue muscles. That also you have to look for. There any, any while palpating the oral cavity, you, have you felt any loosening of the uh, teeth in the lower jaw? Yes, sir. Is it just there or not? Sir, it was there, sir. Uh, the you, first, first and second premolar was loosened, sir. But never mentioned anywhere which is significant or not? Significant, sir. Actually, the uh, initial complaint of the patient was loosening of teeth only, sir. He was presented the the... Stream of events started from the loosening of teeth only, sir. Okay. Is there is any significant because you are saying that tumor starting from the alveolar carcinoma, if it has any importance in your uh, management? Yes, sir. It indicates that uh, the swelling must have involved or from the, the teeth cavity only, it could involve alveolus or uh, mandible, sir. Can grow locally, which could lead uh, for which we have to do uh, mandibulectomy, sir. Yeah, uh, you said there is no tenderness inside. Yes, sir, there was no tenderness inside. Sir. And outside swelling, this lymph node is a uh, submandible region. That swelling which I have shown in the figure is it? Uh, what the size you said? Only one point five centimeter. Yes, sir. Have you measured? Not with scales, sir. It's just uh, Pro approximately or really. Mm, approximately. approximately. But a little bigger than uh, 1.5 centimeters. What I yes, sir. They're standing almost from the midline posteriorly. Even 1A, 1B are in not. Well, because I'm not palpated, just uh, on uh, on looking at the uh, just, just yes. like that. He, okay. he has also put in as a 1B and 2. It's a 2 region, but the 1.5 node cannot go. Yes, sir. So it's it not that, that these all lymph nodes are joined together, adherent to each other. It's a conglomerate mm. mass or so it individual, individual it was, lymph nodes? It was, so. seems to be non metered so it was not at hand. It was like single lymph node. You are telling it's it not significant? No, uh, it was a single swelling, sir. It was. It doesn't look like matted, sir. Like clumped together. Okay, you, you are not mentioned the consistency of the hard, you said. You are telling it's significant or not? 
sir significant sir more than 1 cm of lymph node uh, and for level to 1.5 cm lymph node is significant sir in oral cavity cancer what are the hidden areas in the oral cavity sir the base of the tongue sir have you examined have you palpated base of the tongue Yes, sir. I have uh, examined the base of the tongue by with the spatula, sir. That dry. That is that is infection, palpation. What yes, is sir. the I, correct technique of palpating the posterior of the tongue or base of the tongue? Sir, you have to ask the patient to keep the tongue inside of the mouth. Not does not protrude it out. Okay. And uh, with one hand, you have to stop the biting of the muscle, and from the uh, one, uh, another hand, you have to palpate the base of the tongue and the pharynx, sir. You have to put the fingers uh, between the two jaw. Then you yes, palpate. Usually, you uh, stay behind the patient. Support is set over your chest, and then palpate the posterior side of the tongue. Yes, sir. Oh. That's what sir, uh, sir asked. I will palpate at other parts of the oral cavity because uh, sometimes the uh, growths are uh, synchronous, uh, synchronous growths. Yes, sir. I have uh, yes, examined sir. the sir, oral cavity. the reason to uh, palpate methodically from the vestibule, gums, buccal mucosa, palate, uh, soft palate, and uh, posterior of the tongue, like that. Methodically, every part of the oral cavity should be examined. Yes, sir. I have examined, sir. The so, both the lips comes into the oral cavity, or where the oral cavity starts? Sir, oral cavity starts from this behind the lips sir actually lips doesn't come inside the oral cavity lips doesn't come part of the lips comes to the vermilion border you get that anything behind the vermilion border is the yes, sir, yes, sir. Sorry, oral sir. cavity no yes sir from the vermilion border yes sir to vermilion border to facial pillar sir posterior pillar facial pillar sir first tonsillar pillars behind that there is oral that, that, that is on the lateral side no Okay. Anteriorly, we say vermilion border. Posteriorly, oral cavity comes up to what? Posteriorly, sir, it come, uh, goes till the first tonsillar pillar, sir. Hmm. Superiorly? Superiorly, sir, till uh, soft palate and uvula, sir. Uvula and soft palate is not coming to the part of the oral cavity. No? It is a junction yeah. of the hard palate yeah. and the soft palate. Sir. Yeah. Hmm? That, that comes to the oral cavity. So you must know the uh, exact oh, quality, where you are going to examine, which you are going to examine. Mm -hmm. Why do you look for the discolored patches in the oral cavity? So, uh, discolored patches like erythroplakia, leukoplakia, some mucous fibrosis. Uh, what, is, what is the significance of leukoplakia? It's a pre-malignant lesion, sir, it is. How, How many define? percentage? Sorry. To answer the SAR question, how will you define leukoplakia? So, it is a white lesion which does not scrape off while, uh, with scratching, sir. Is that the definition given? Yes, definitely your definition, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely your definition for that, no? Yes, sir. White patch that is not characterized by pathologically anything like that. We should, we should know the definition. Yes, sir. What percentage of leukoplakia will turn malignant? So 3 to 5 percent, sir. Malab, I'm not sure. 1 to 3 percentage mm -hmm. only. If there is any, any, can you look at the uh, leukoplakia and say this leukoplakia can turn malignant more? Sir, big, uh, with the oh, site, yeah. sir, uh, it is mentioned. The... Yeah, size, mm -hmm. site is better. Size mm -hmm. is also there. You want the sex, it is not the male, it is a female, it is more. It is not the smoke case. Non smoke case, if there is leukoplakia, there will be more prone for that. It's not a smooth, if it is irregular surface. So you can look in the leukoplakia and say that. Among leukoplakia and erythroplakia, which is more malignant? Erythroplakia, sir. Erythroplakia is okay. You know, there are different types of leukoplakia, there are. Isn't yes. it? Yeah, different yes, types of leukoplakia have the... malignancy potential. What are the yes, there are five types of leukoplakia, sir. Yeah. So which one has got highest potential for malignant transformation? Which is, which is more likely? I don't remember. Nodular one, speckled one. Speckled one. Speckled hmm? or nodular. 
Sorry. Sir. Did you examine the outer aspect of the uh, this uh, patient and uh, have you written in your slide? No, sir. Outside, no. I have not examined that. Very, a... very important. Big. Should yes. never miss that. Not yes. just a mandible examination. Such a big swelling is there. What do you expect here? Two important things. What do you expect on palpation for this outer thing? Even I, I have not examined, but we can make out by the figure Picture. two important findings. What are they? One is any induration or a swelling itself you are feeling. Second yes, is sir. skin fixation. Skin, skin. Yes. Sir. You said it is erythematous or something you are talking. Correct? Yes, it was erythematous. And, uh, yes. Show that lateral aspect. Uh, film uh, One picture showing that outer aspect. Yes. No, 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 previous one. Not this. That one more. Uh, yeah. Can you enlarge it a little more? Yes. Sir. So, so you would never uh, miss such uh, physical findings in the MS examination. Okay. Yes, Outer sir. aspect. Mm -hmm. Yes. See that? Actually, lip also, angle is almost getting involved, actually. If you see carefully, how, how the angle, look at the uh, commissary is involved. Yes, commissary is involved. See that you can clearly make out a difference here. Both, yes. You see the look at the nasolabial fold on both sides. Back, that shows a significant edema also here. So, yes, so it's an important very, findings. You should very, not miss those findings. Very obvious finding which very you are not uh, given importance. Yes, Even the node, node here, this it looks. It very, looks big. <laughs> very big. Actually, it's very big, actually. That's what I've been telling. One point and, five centimeter. Uh, and, and also, it, the margin between that lower part of the mandible and submandibular, uh, you see that yes. node, very, very close there. That means and, very big quality. And node also probably involved in the skin because part is why it's getting stretched there. Mm -hmm. so actually, it is enlarged, uh, very large, sir, that where skin is bulging, but it, uh, skin was mobile over the node, sir. Oh, you are looking for the opposite side. See that how the different opposite yes, side. Right. Always the uh, uh, especially oral cavity, squamous cell carcinomas, and uh, even penis. You know these are the two areas where you get uh, extensive induration. So you have to specifically look much yeah, beyond the much beyond the lesion itself. This is an important finding. Neck as well as when you feel the neck node or this especially here. Uh, so, you have to make a mention about that, right? Okay. One of the easiest so, thing is to compare bilaterally. Then you yes. cannot miss. Yes. It is very obvious. The nasolabial fold, uh, angle of mouth, I think it'll be a like the uh, di uh, di uh, dimple on the normal side. These are the easiest thing. Even, even if one is not trained for oral malignancy, probably you can observe. Right. Both the oral malignancy and penile malignancy, they will not have a systemic manifestation much. They will have only the local spread like this and they will the nodal spread. That you have to speak much more important. Basically, they are local regional disease, unless uh, in specific situations like immunosuppression. Right. And what is the cause of mortality in such patients? Both the uh, local regional diseases, common? Uh, the cause of mortality usually is uh, chest infections, sir, lung infections, pulmonary causes, sir. Any other thing? Most common. Much Most more common. than even aspiration pneumonia. <sighs> Dire emergency will be created. Uh, strider, sir. No, no, something. Something uh, else, surgical. From where it, bleeding. Bleeding. Okay. From where? From where and what will you do? Auricotemporal artery and sir, lingual, uh, lingual. Auricular temporal, nothing. It is in very superficial artery 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 and, and facial arteries. Anything? Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, mainly lymph nodes, when you get enlarged, you know, it will erode into the major vessels underneath. Staging. Uh, so, so there are a lot of uh, clinical uh, shortcomings, like uh, mainly Rajagopachanis sir told examination from outside, and uh, yes. others have also added to that. 
examination because being a very common case in the exam a short case all these basic things are very very essential to go ahead with the eventual discussions of management and other things okay these things you can't cannot say i have missed it and that is a very common condition uh, very very common condition that is the point which you have to remember okay so how you are going to proceed uh, devan so with this <coughs> presentation sir first of all i'll get a ortho opg of the patient ortho pentagram of the patient then biopsy from the lesion why do you want to get the ortho pentagram so though the uh, this investigation does not have that sensitivity but it provides the invasion it can show the invasion into the alveolus and dental cavities sir. that is mm-hmm. uh, that is uh, accepted but mainly currently it's, it's the ct scan for that yeah go for the biopsy and get a ct uh, that, that is the first thing no you have to do go for the biopsy and get a ct neck and head ct head and neck so biopsy for varicocele take... diseases must yes sir biopsy from where will take sir biopsy from the margin of the ulcer sir margin or edge 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 yes sir edge of the ulcer under what anesthesia will you use to take biopsy so it is better to go uh, under ga so that you can examine all the hidden area then get the biopsy well like pen endoscopy uh, like is laryngoscopy and uh, laryngoscopy you could do and get the biopsy okay. how will assess the lymph node status so stand behind the patient and ask the patient to flex his neck No, that not clinical assessment. I said already clinical assessment is over. No. Okay, sir. Management wise. So management wise, if there is a neck node negative, sir, if there is no node in the neck. No, no. This patient, you have got clinically. You said uh, 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 two A one one B one B two A is involved. You have to confirm no. What is the size? Uh, how far deeper it is gone? Because the size you said is one point five centimeter, but what we think it's much bigger than that. How will you ever get nodal nodal disease? Uh, so CT head and neck, sir. Neck with CT neck. No simple ultrasound will not help you. Ultrasound. Is, ultrasound is a very sensitive investigation, no? Ultrasound neck is very sensitive investigation. Or nose. Sir, you suppose you have done a biopsy, and what you are expecting in the biopsy? The uh, changes of. Suggestive malignancy, sir. Squamous cell carcinoma. What malignancy? What malignancy you are expecting? And carcinoma. what? What? What will be the feature in the histology? So squamous cell carcinoma, um, suspecting, sir. What? What is the feature of squamous cell carcinoma? What will the histological findings will be? Sir, so there will be uh, nuclei, uh, like dysplastic, uh, nu- large nuclei with nucleoli with. Uh, dysplasia. With, uh, so talking about malignancy, you are talking about dysplasia. No, no, sir. Uh, nucleoli, nucleoli, and large nucleoli. with increase uh, chromatin content inside the nucleus with pearls uh, pearls squamous pearls you get a keratinized type or non keratinized which is what is keratinized squamous cell carcinoma what is non keratinized squamous cell carcinoma keratinized squamous cell carcinoma so when there is a layer of keratin above uh, this okay. epithelium sir so can you get a squamous cell without keratin Yes, sir. The uh, it is defined, sir. Okay. It indicates what? That's why it is defined, sir. Keratinized and non-keratinized. What it indicates? If it is non-keratinized. If it is non-keratinized, what it indicates? So you need to do one more test then. If it is non-keratinized, you are able to suspect something more. The papilloma virus infection. Okay. So papilloma. when you have a more of papilloma virus infection, you will have because the management part also differ for the patient who has the papilloma virus. so that histology will also gives you some clue may not may not be it is a very rigid but you can get when you get a non keratinized you have to think it is most possibly a, a papilloma virus induced hpv suppose you don't get this pulse this keratin pulse and yeah. how much percentage of squamous cell carcinoma do you get keratin uh, this uh, pulse um, not sure sir only 30% so what is suppose you don't get this Yes, sir. It will not become a B squamous cell carcinoma. No, no. Suppose there are no epithelial pulse, sir. Hmm. What it what it means for you? So, kid, uh, like keratin pulse is not 
necessary for making diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma yeah it's not necessary but suppose you don't get then what does what information do you get by it is the tumor aggressive or less aggressive if it is not there aggressive or less uh, aggressive? Uh, uh, more aggressive sir that means it is why uh, why so um, like more aggressive tumors does not have this keratin uh, less differentiation there is less, less differentiation it means less differentiation yes sir also i just wanted to correct you for this uh, involvement of the skin which you said the skin is not pinchable it is very difficult because somewhere the skin may be fixed somewhere the skin may not be fixed so if you move the lump if you remove remove the ulcer does the skin move along with it or not that is a better way than just moving the picking up the skin uh, here and there okay yes sir you have what confirmed your viruses which are associated with the oral cancer uh, hpv uh, then epstein barr virus sir ebv and hpv and ebv sir any other virus mm, htlc sir What about HIV? Sensational HIV. You can add anything to that. Human papilloma virus, HPV, EBV, and HPV. How the HPV virus cancers are different from the non-HPV virus cancers? The HPV virus uh, cancers are less aggressive. Occurs in younger patients. Does not uh, correlate with the tobacco and alcohol chewing. Uh, tobacco chewing and alcohol drinking. and has better prognosis sir what were the lymph nodes and what is the usual site for that what is the usual site in the oropharyngeal region whether it is main in the main oral cavity or they are more in the oropharynx they are more in the oro, uh, oropharynx sir and what were the lymph nodes lymph nodes are smaller or bigger in size in case of hpv so the Usually they are larger, you know, as compared to the big lymph nodes in the case of the HPV associated viruses. Which HPV will be caused? Which which HPV? The sixteen and eighteen. I just What like is to field cancerization? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. What is field cancerization? So field cancerization, uh, it is a field effect. causing similar kind of lesion because of a similar insult in multiple sites sir okay. so if you are suspecting a patient is having the field cancerization what yes. additional investigations you will carry out for these patients so for uh, if you are suspecting a field cancer you should go for a pan endoscopy sir in under gm so what do you only the gi tract uh, sorry sir So, what are the patients where you suspect that this patient may have a sin trans cancer? So, the patient this so this field effect only causes the synchronous cancers. So like patient who is chewing tobacco, old age. Right. So, and you are finding that there is some abnormal finding. You are thinking there is a small lesion which is there in the oral cavity, but the patient has the hoarseness of the voice. Okay, so the type of the presentation in that those cases you have to suspect that uh, the patient might be having the synchronous cancer over there. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll go, we'll go on to management, uh, sir. What is what is the plan yeah, of management? Yeah, please. Uh, from investigation onwards or directly towards the management, sir. Treatment, management. Okay. Treatment. Treatment, sir. So for treatment, sir. there are multimodal treatment could be there for the patient radiation and surgery has equal efficacy for the oral cancer no, you your your patient what is the stage in which this patient is there sir patient has in stage 3 sir 
stage three. T three in four four two B has put T four A and two B M zero. So three A or three B? So three B three B sir. So you have both options. You can either yes. do surgery, you can show radiology. Yes. Sir. For a stage three cancer. So for which stage, which one do you do? Uh, for stage so, one and two, you can choose between radiotherapy and surgery. But stage three, you cannot choose between them. And in this case, you are expecting alveolar carcinoma. Yes, sir. Do you have an option of radiotherapy? No, sir. First, I'll go for a surgery, upfront surgery. So, though. so you, according to your case, this patient, what you are going to manage, you must say. So I will go for upfront surgery. This uh, like wide local excision with segmental mandibulectomy with uh, right uh, modified radical neck dissection and then reconstruction, sir. Whenever you are in the area of the marginal I mean, trigone, don't think of a segmental mandibulectomy. Okay. This you said an extensive lesion. It is the skin is there. Hemi mandibulectomy. Sir. So be careful when you choose. You think of your case, yes, and properly. Then you have to talk. Hmm? And uh, Biren, only surgery is not enough in stage three cancers of oral malignancy. You know, it is always combined modality of treatment. Don't say only surgery. Surgery mm -hmm. always followed by radiotherapy. Most of the radiotherapy. Okay. Patient is not fit for surgery. Radiotherapy followed by surgery. Always it is a combined modality of treatment. Combined modality. Okay, not a single modality of treatment. Yes, it is standard protocol for yes. stage three. Okay. Yes. And here again, lymph nodes are so big. Uh, modified radical nucleation is, I don't know, technically not that uh, easy because you need to clear the lymph node. If you don't clear the lymph node, recurrence is uh, uh, definitely it is a rather residual disease which you are uh, creating. So when you retain the IJV here, it's difficult to clear the lymph nodes, I think. Such a big leaf because you said lymph nodes are small, but some look like lymph nodes are quite big. And uh, I don't surprise you. It is that when you do there may be many, many nodes actually. Not many, many nodes. So what you will do for the nodes? Uh, uh, modified, radical like dissections I have planned, but like if Sir is saying then radiotherapy first, followed by neck radiation, followed by surgery, sir. No, I think, uh, I think the point is uh, you can't say that I will do surgery in the oral cavity and radiation in the neck. You know, it's it's not like that. Okay. What what direct message is you do surgery followed by radiation for both. That's a different issue. You, yes, you probably can't say that I will irradiate the neck and then surgery. I will operate first. Uh, in the, no, no. Yes, so, no. so that IJV is mentioned because uh, it is uh, obviously to clear that uh, nodes. Clear the, this one. You may have to do MRI here of the neck to go to the skull base. Uh, if suppose it is, uh, if, uh, we are reaching the jugular forum area, very difficult means uh, there is a better imaging if that is the situation combined. So, so that uh, IJV obviously you can you may have to sacrifice in this patient. That is a different issue. But don't say mixed things like you know. I will uh, I will uh, treat oral cavity by surgery and neck by radiation followed by surgery. No, that is not. It, it may be reverse for well because neck yes. is what mainly for mainly treatment modality you are using for primary. Same yes. treatment modality has to be for the second in the for neck. Secondary part. also. Yes. Uh, mainly secondary, mainly surgery treatment is the treatment for secondary sexual. When when will you say it is not operable surgically? T uh, four B cancer, sir, actually. Which includes so how, do, how do you how do you find out it is T four B? So if uh, it encases the definition is encases encasement of carotid artery or involvement of pharyngeal oh, spaces, no. skull base, skull, skull base. base, mainly skull base involvement. Hmm. So what do you look in the CT for the skull base involvement? So this uh, erosion of this uh, cli uh, clivus and so. You have to see the pterygoid plate of the foramen ovale. The widening of the foramen ovale will be the, of the very important feature. 
second one the trigger plate involvement the trigger force involvement is the trigger plate mainly trigger plate involvement trigger plate yeah. so you have created the dissected the mandibulectomy created a large area how you are going to reconstruct uh, the reconstruction options like uh, free flap repair sir from fibular bone sir then there could be bilob uh, pmmc flap Um, what? What is the feeding vessel for PMA flap? So the uh, little uh, pectoral artery, sir. Then how do you plan the reconstruction of this defect which is there? Bone, you have to reconstruct bone. Then so, bo uh, so for bone free fibular flap, flap, fibular flap, will uh, I'll use sir. Then for this musculocutaneous defect sir, PMMC flap could be used sir for repair, for reconstruction sir. You know what are the various basic principles which are there whenever there is a <coughs> facial defect is there in the oral cancers. So first of all, like what are the basic principles in how many layers you have to. Reconstruct it. Mm. Okay, you have to provide a lining, you have to provide a support, and you have to provide a cover. Yes, okay, so you require the three layers of that. Lining so for the, yes, for the lining, what you are going to do means you require definitely to have some type of the mucosal cover there. Yes, sir. What are the various ways by which you can provide the mucosal cover? So this PMMC flap, bilobe flap, or tree flap, sir. Can you use some tissue in the oral cavity itself to provide the simpler way, easier way? Can you use tongue for, flap? For smaller lesions, sir, primary closure the flap. No, here it is difficult primary yes, okay, uh, yes, so it will not unless it is a very small area it is difficult it will lead into the problem they won't be able to open the mouth afterwards you yes. need to cover the defect always yes, almost sir. always yes, so whatever the case they come to us by then we you have to plan like sir rightly told right, sir. you can use the like you hear the defect is going to be a big one you know so you have to use either a flap which gives both the cover as well as the lining or you have to use the two flaps one for the lining purpose and one for the support now, what is the difference between a flap which is really used for the lining purpose and for the cover purpose mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay, the lining flap should not have any hairs okay, okay, so you can use only that flap which mm -hmm. does not have the hairs Okay. For the cover purpose, you can use the hairs one, okay, but not for the lining purpose. Now, what about the support? How can you provide the support? So with what are the various ways to provide the support? So free fibular flap. Yeah, before the like, you know, everyone cannot do a free fibular flap. Huh. Okay. So if you are doing a free fibular flap, you will take everything with along with that. Yes. But just for the support, what are the things you have got in your so you can use this. Uh, you can provide the autogenous tissue which is there. For autogenic. Okay, like if you are, and you can do a partial mandibulectomy. Okay, that will provide that. If you, it is possible to do that, you right. can use the ribs for that purpose. You can use the scapula for that purpose, or you can use the various other plates which are there, like the titanium plates which are there. So that can be done, and definitely the best one will be the some type of the free microvascular flap which is there yes. which can come from the radius or which can come from the fibula okay. and for the cover what you are going to do some skin flap yeah you Protection. can use the deltopectoral you can use the yes even the forehead flap can be used for that purpose mm -hmm. so these are various way to reconstruct the oral cavity mm -hmm. 
That's about what I what I told lymph node dissection you are going to do in this patient. Uh, modified radical neck dissection, sir. Okay. What does that contain? Sir, modified radical neck dissection uh, are further divided into three types, sir. Yes. Uh, in type one, you preserve the spinal accessory nerve and you excise sternocleidomastoid IJV one to five lymph node and some mandibular gland, sir. How many lymph nodes should be there in one classical radical neck dissection? Sir, so, uh, one to five. Twelve, 12 lymph nodes, sir. 12 to 16 lymph nodes. 12, 12 to 16 lymph nodes must be there at least in a classical radical neck dissection. Yes. You know, everyone was asking what is the cause of the death in these patients and one of the important causes is the carotid blowout. Right, sir. Right. So, how will you prevent, especially it occurs usually after you have done the radical neck dissection. So, how you are going to prevent that? So, by covering the dissection after a artery by muscle cover, sir. Yes. Which muscle you are going to use? Giving it a cover, sir. Hmm? Which muscle you are going to use? Scalinus, sir. Trapezius and scalinus. Scalini and trapezius. Scalini, I will rotate there. So if, if, if you are doing, a, if if you're doing the inguinal block dissection, you know which muscle is used to cover the femoral vessels? Yes, the sartorius and this. Sartorius is used there. Similar type of the muscle Sorry. is there in the neck also. So, sternocleidomastoid, if you are preserving, you can use it to cover the. Yes, if you are preserving that, you can yeah. use that. You know? Otherwise, you will do the levator scapuli, which levator is scapuli. Levator, scapuli. Okay. levator scapuli will be used to cover that. What other precaution has to be taken to prevent the carotid blowout? Sharp dissection. You're, when you are marking the flaps, yes, sir. then what precaution has to be taken? You know, you can make two flaps, you can make it three flaps, you can make the four flaps for the radical neck dissection. That angulation should not lie over the carotid. Yeah. That you must take care that whenever it is joining in that area because that is the way it is going to necrose in that area. And that necrosis can lead to the infection and the, and the carotid blow. Right. 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 What is the outcome? What is the prognosis in this patient? Looking at the uh, clinical findings and staging. Mm, yes, sir. The prognosis of five year survival is in uh, if you uh, provide this negative margin to the patient and post operative radiotherapy, the five year survival is uh, 30 to 60 percent. What is the role of regional chemotherapy in this patient? Uh, sorry, sir. I will, I will do that regional chemotherapy. Sir, there is no chemotherapy indication is in stage 4, sir, or if the margin came out to be positive, sir. I will do that, regional chemotherapy. Which vessel you will uh, cannulate? Okay. When you give regional chemotherapy? Sir, this easier for inhibitors we use, sir, but I don't know. How. No, I am not asking about the drugs, sir. Which, which vessel you will give the regional chemotherapy in the neck? Usually, external carotid artery. Yes. Okay, through external carotid artery, cannulate and do that. What way, uh, when you give an arterial care, regional chemotherapy, how will you infuse the drugs? How will you infuse the drug? Usually, you use the preserve pump. Otherwise, we, I can the... we wind up this to move yes, sir, to the yes, next sir. case? Sir? Yes, sir. We will wind up and go to the next case, I think. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Dhirend, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, nice presentation, but there are some clinical shortcomings like uh, Rajiv Pishan have told examination from the outside and some relevant history. Rajiv sir has uh, very nicely pointed out. Yes, sir. They should have been taken uh, properly, actually. Uh, yes, those sir. things are very, very important to step up your discussion uh, in the eventual course, in the, especially in the exam. So, clinical ex uh, history and uh, Proper clinical examination uh, cannot have a shortcomings, I think. Uh, I think everybody agrees for that. Yes, uh, okay, that's very, very important, especially case like this. Uh, you can't miss the findings outside. That is the gist of the presentation, I think. Sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Th
thank you for valuable suggestion sir i'll keep in mind sir thank you thank you jiden thank you sir connect well sir we'll go for second yes, one sir, yes sir yes uh, sir i'm listening to that and i think uh, we had a good discussion jiden please keep note of it i will also have with the uh, professor na uh, your hod sir yes sir then uh, do you have any questions to ask or we move on to the next case sir thank you sir thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you thank you jiden thank you, thank you, and, thank you sir. sorry for this confusion One second, sir. Doctor Tarani, are you with us? Doctor Tarani. She, we can see her uh, uh, this picture. She she has logged in actually. Yeah, we can see her. Uh, uh, yes, Tarani Rajeshwaran, no? Doctor Tarani, you please log out and log in. She has logged out. I just spoke to her over phones. Mm -hmm. think now we are okay please unmute yourself start your powerpoint ma hello sir we are you audible, are able to hear you well uh, please share your powerpoint and start your presentation yes, Do you have any challenges, Doctor Tarani? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm just sorting it out. Just, just to give me one minute, sir. Sorry for the. Uh... Sir, I'm having a little problem with that. Sir, sharing. Use some other device, ma. Log out and log in. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do this. Sinu Hasan, sir, are you with us, sir? What is your difficulty, ma? Yes, sir, I am not able to share that. Uh, it is not supporting me, sir. 
in this app. Srinivasan sir is with us, sir. He is seen. I think he, I, he is locked in. Maybe he is sir, not Maybe. near the computer. Okay, sir. Tarni, unless you use some other device, it's Should not going him? to happen. Should I call him, Srinivasan sir? No, yes, sir. Yes, I yes, can sir. request him to. Do you have any friends nearby with an alternative system? Hitesh, uh, will you be able to play the slides, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, I, it is in the groups at the PG Clinics group. It is. I, I, I'll open, sir. Sorry for the. No, uh, no, no. I'll open. I'll open. I'll open. I'll open. Just a minute, sir. Yes, sir. Opening my group on laptop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, I have shared. Can you see, sir? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Srinivasan sir is sharing. Okay. Uh, okay. Sir, Dr. Bapath is asking about that last week case which we presented. What happened to that wall lesion, sir? Sir, this is uh, Andarya, sir, or uh, Srinivasan, sir, PowerPoint, sir? And the, uh, Srinivasan, sir. Srinivasan, sir, uh, can she use this and present, sir? Darini, sir, you can sir, start presenting. Ma. That's not visible to me, sir. No, you have to do something for it. The problem is on your side. I maximum help yes, I can ask yes, this yes, other yes, faculty yes, to yes, show yes. that slide. We are able to see the yes, slide. Sir, yes, sir. You can see the slide, no? No, sir. In the screen. I'm not able to see when anything. I no, sir. No, sir. In the system, you log in with your phone. In that case, we have uh, taken biopsy, sir, today only. Papa, sir, you can unmute yourself, sir. Sir, a message on the chat box. Sir. Papa, sir, I take, we have taken the biopsy today, sir. Mm. When the biopsy report comes, I'll message you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Tarani, you start your presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Sorry for uh, all this disturbance, sir. Uh, sir, I'm Dharani from uh, postgraduate resident from Madras Medical College, sir. Uh, sir, my patient, she is a 50 year old uh, uh, female with the complaints of uh, lump in the right breast for the past two months. Uh, she incidentally noticed this lump in the right breast uh, two months ago. It's gradually progressing to uh, progress to attain the current size, not associated with pain. Uh, no. Uh, no history of uh, uh, nipple discharge and nipple retraction. No other uh, swelling is. Uh... Sir, am I, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, go ahead. You are audible. Yes, you are audible. yes. Uh, no, uh, no history of nipple retraction, no history of nipple discharge, not associated with pain. Uh, no history of other uh, swelling uh, or a lump in the other breast or axilla. And um, 
no other swelling in the arm and thorax region uh, no history of trauma no history of fever um, and uh, no history of uh, chest pain breathlessness no history of jaundice no history of uh, uh, abdominal distension uh, no history of uh, uh, a, a low back ache uh, no history of uh, a loss of appetite and uh, a loss of weight past history uh, she is uh, she uh, no history of similar complaints in the past she is a uh, non diabetic and uh, on oha for the past 5 uh, uh, years Mm, and um, uh, uh, personal history, uh, she is personal history. Uh, she is uh, a non-vegetarian uh, mixed. She consumes mixed diet. Uh, no history of any substance abuse. A normal sleeping cycle and bladder and bowel uh, habits. And uh, uh, with uh, menstrual history, she attained menopause by thirteen years of age and attained menopause by forty-eight years of age. and uh, obstetric history she uh, had her first child by 26 years of age and second child by uh, sorry 28 years of age and second child by 38 years of age uh, 30 years of age sorry uh, then uh, with the family history Uh, yes sir and family history no history of similar complaints in the family members no history of uh, uh, breast cancer or ovarian or endometrial cancer in among the family members and uh, uh, so for the history uh, my summary is a 50 year old female uh, uh, diabetic post menopausal female uh, uh, with uh, 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 painless progressive uh, lump in the right breast for the past two months so i come uh, with the diagnosis of uh, breast tumor mostly malignant in etiology sir why uh, why it, why you thought it is a malignant in etiology uh, just i'm asking for clarification ah yes sir sir because uh, she is a uh, post menopausal woman age is more than 50 years and uh, she is she has developed a painless uh, progressive lump in the breast so i come with the diagnosis of uh, uh, malignant tumor sir what is the incidence of uh, uh, malignancy in overall breast lump wise how much lump in the breast the incidence of malignancy in the, among the lump in the breast total number how much the percentage of malignancy is but what otherwise what is the commonest cause of breast lump benign or malignant commonest is benign sir how much uh sir how much how much what is the percentage of benign what is the percentage of malignancy 60 percentage sir still more right the commonest up to 90 percent it is only a benign okay only 10 percent are malignant 10 percent is a malignant But whatever it is, mainly worried for anybody present with this malignancy. That's why, or or any breast lump should be considered as malignancy unless proved otherwise. Even though incidence is yes, only ten percent. Okay, yes. that is the what most of the uh, uh, females when they come with the breast lump, they are worried about whether it is malignancy yes, or not. It's their main worry. Okay, they come for. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Continue. What is Gale's index, ma? How do you how do you calculate the Gale's index? Risk factor uh, assessment. Gale yes. Gale index. Uh, What are the things you look in that? Age, sir. So you are patient. Sorry. What are the for your patient? What are the things is there? You said you are first pregnant. Um, first pregnancy yes, is at twenty eight. Is it a risk factor or not? Yes, sir. It's a risk factor, sir. Late uh, risk factor. Uh, late pregnancy. First, Yes, sir. Late pregnancy is a risk factor. No, sir. Late pregnancy is a risk factor, sir. Oh, so age twenty-eight is a risk the factor. The more the number of menstrual cycles, more is the risk factor, sir. It is not that more the number. Why the more the number? The more exposure to the hormones, the estrogen, sir. No, why early menarche is considered as a risk factor? Uh, that's uh, the more uh, more exposure to the hormones the, no, no. the uh, their really? hormone receptors also will be in the breast so proliferative phase will be more and sense may result like in that ma in a early menarche the cycle will be anovulatory cycle 
normally you have a estrogen and progesterone so here yes, when sir. it is anovulatory cycle patient will not have a progesterone he has a continuous time period of estrogen exposure it is not only the number yes sir because number the okay, age sir. at which the malignancy comes to differ so early menarche okay, and the late menarche why do you get anovulatory cycle in the early menarche uh the hormonal uh, balance will not be uh, uh, accurate sir so there will be not an anovulatory cycle because of the hypothalamic pituitary axis will not be so will not be developed in properly in the initial stages sir What are absolute risk factors for calcium membranes? High risk. Uh, genetic and familial uh, uh, factors, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And pathological, pathological, uh, atypical doctor hyperplasia uh, or atypical lobular hyperplasia. That is proliferative atypical cells that uh, will result in malignancy, sir. So age of the patient, sex of the patient. These are non-stage. Ah, uh, that are modified, uh, non-modified. Yes. Non-modified. Non-modified. उटेंट in a full term delivery in the uh, in the full yes, term sir. in the early part of pregnancy there will yes, be more sir. amount of estrogen later part of pregnancy more amount of progesterone isn't it yes there sir yes sir yes sir abortions in the early part of pregnancy she will be exposed to more amount of estrogen that's why yes sir abortions is a very oh. significant uh, history finding okay, in relation to ca breast case okay 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 sir thank you Why infertility? I mean, non non bearing a child is a risk factor. Non. Uh, Suppose he is having no no issue, children is not there. He is an early parent. Is it a risk factor? Yes, sir. Why? Yes, sir. Early parent is a risk factor. Uh, Why? What are the types of terminal ductal lobules you have? What is type one, type two, type three? You are aware of that. No sir. Oh, so, the so pregnancy you get more the type three, which is less cancerous. The so type two, which is comes in between type one and type three, is more cancerous. Yes. Oh, sir. Uh, is it about about estradiol and estrogen, sir? Component, sir. Estrogen. That is probably obesity. That is the cause of the obesity, especially in the postmenopausal yeah. woman. When you have an obesity, there is a predisposing factor, female factor for the. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Currently, actually, newer risk assessment uh, is there. I don't know whether it will be asked or not. Change in one modified one. Nairai Razik uh, assessment model. So that is a, a, a upgrade of the like what sir told. Uh, yeah. It's the Gales model. Yeah. Okay, sir. What are other models other than Gales? What are the other models now? It is available. Yes, yes, that's what that's what you have to know these at least a few words about these things because it's the with the current uh, thinking about the uh, uh, carcinoma breast as a uh, risk factors considered. Although so many models are there, actually few models. Additionally, then the Gale is the old model actually. That's the baseline for yes. few more models you have to know that what is commonly currently used is a Tyrer Razik model. There are so many parameters are there in that uh, which we can go through yes. and keep it in mind. लंबारा Uh, yes, sir. Not L4 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 L
and to that region only you get what type of lesion you get uh, osteolytic sir how, how it goes there uh, that uh, the plexus can you, can uh, batson plexus uh, can you describe the batson of, plexus what is it? what is it what is it describe uh, what is batson plexus from where to where it is there and what is the tributary it gets what are special How features yes sir. sir please go ahead sir special features of batson plexus uh, that is how it makes the uh, metastasis in the bone unlike other venous plexus so the sir is asking how uh, how from the breast yes. it has gone through the batson plexus and the bone what the pathway No, when oh. you say basal plexus, it is enough for undergraduate level. But the postgraduate, you must know how it goes from yes. the breast to the basal plexus. From the basal plexus, it is only a paravertebral. How it goes to the vertebra, yes. how it affects the vertebra. That detail, you must study because anatomy it, is uh, more important. No? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Yes. How from okay, the breast okay. malignant cells? It all. It's it's the retrograde retrograde uh, 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 flow in that uh, plexus of veins that results in uh, uh, osteolytic lesions in the. Oh, that is true. That is true. It is commonly it is osteolytic. Sometimes it may, it may be a combination of osteolytic or osteo osteoblastic. That is the different thing. Now, what Sir is asking, how malignant cells reach at the Batson plexus? What is the communication? What is the connection? How from the breast it has reached? What is the primary venous drainage from the breast, and which vein goes there? Which, which, from which through which vein it is connected? Some this is this is what sir told anatomy. If you know the anatomy, you'll be able to answer. That's purely surgical anatomy question. Go a little posterior to the breast, you may get the answer. Posterior to the vascular veins. <laughs> yes, sir. These are uh, they, there's the retrograde flow, sir, because they are valves. No, don't don't use the word retrograde, ma. There is nothing retrograde here. No, posterior. Uh, sir, your valves. That then plexus exists from the sacrum to the base of the skull. So anywhere it can go, it's no wall. Okay, but sir. how from the breast it goes intercostal veins means which intercostal veins go? So all that it is in depth. You so read. Okay. So Please go today read and the intercostal vein, solely intercostal, pelvic intercostal, subcostal vein, where it goes, how it drains into that. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. That's what sir I wanted to ask. Okay. 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 So when the, what what sir is uh, actually telling is whatever relevant history like in previous case which you have discussed you should know why you are asking that history what is the relevant reason and uh, your anatomical or pathophysiological connection uh, yes, sir. that's how you should that's how you uh, you differ from the undergraduate questions are same philosophy is same but okay. your analysis and thinking must be much more advanced and specific. Unlike undergraduates, understood? No, otherwise case is same. Yes. Same case we keep for the UG also. So a lot of difference in analysis and discussion. You should, you should, whatever word you utter, you should be able to justify. You should be able to give reason. That is what exactly Sir is telling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sir, when it goes to the vertebra, you know which part of the vertebra is usually involved? The body, sir. Yes, sir. And in the body, which part is involved? Uh, uh, body, this uh, peripheral, sir, peripheries of the body, sir, goes from periphery to the center. Sir. From the body, what does it come out? You know what is pedicle? Sir? Pedicle, ma. Pedicle uh, that arises from the body of the vertebra, sir. And if you take a plain x ray of the vertebra, how yes. does the pedicle yes. look like? They call it a bull size. Look at the rounded structure there in the body of the vertebra. Mm -hmm. That is the pedicle. <clears throat> and okay. that is the site where you have the exact metastasis. And it can be both osteosclerotic or it can be also osteolytic. Okay, you can yes, be both sir. in the. You know, what are the common causes of osteosclerotic type of the metastasis to the vertebra? What are the common cancers which has got the Majority are the osteolytic, but which are the osteosclerotic? More common in main. Prost Osteoblastic. Prostatic, 
Uh, that's plastic. Uh, prosthetic is nostoplastic, sir. It's prostate is the most important. Important, yes, sir. Yes. Then it can be the breast. It can be from the lungs or it can be from the kidneys. Mm -hmm. you, know? you can have the osteosclerotic variety. Now tell what are the various absolute risk factors and what are the various relative risk factors for the breast cancer? Sir, uh, absolute risk factors, uh, sir, as they are non modifiable risk factors, age right. of the patient, uh, yes, and uh, uh, early monarchy that is increased in the anovulatory cycles. And uh, uh, early monarchy is a absolute risk factor? Non what do you, what do you understand factor? by that? If I ask you what is absolute risk factor and what is relative risk factor, what do that you understand? Will definitely, by that? that will be definitely leading to, uh, most probably leading to the uh, malignancy, sir. How you much? can't change it. You can't change that. Yes, sir. You can't change the age and change the sex. So what about absolute yes, risk factor? What do you, what sir, yes, the age. Female? Yes, sir. age, sir. gender of the sex, female, sex, uh, female gender, and uh, and uh, this menstrual history, sir. That is always menstrual, modifiable. Menstrual history is not a. No? Menstrual history is not a. Yes. Sir, it's not modifiable, sir. You can modify it. You can you are, can treat it. You can give drugs. You can do such lot of hydrogenic effect can oh, be also oh. produced on the menstrual cycle. So it is a modifiable. Oh, okay, sir. More. Okay. okay, sir. Okay, the family history is there, you know? Ge genetic history, uh, uh, familial uh, breast carcinomas in the fam uh, families. Uh, if a lady already are, uh, had a suffered from the breast cancer, okay, if somebody in, has in, suffered in, from the breast cancer. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, no, that is an absolute risk factor. Absolute risk factor. Ah, yes, if somebody sir. had if somebody had a right breast cancer, she's more likely to have the left breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Whatever the treatment you give, it is a risk factor. Uh, yes. And if any benign breast disease, which is a risk, absolute risk factor? A benign, uh, that's uh, ductal carcinoma in C2. Uh, the, uh, the atypical uh, ductal hyperplasia. Yes, atypical ductal hyperplasia. You know? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, and then the BRCA gene, which is there. Uh, yes. Okay, so these are only five or six absolute risk factors. Age of okay. the patient, sex of the patient, family history, history. patient Genetic, had breast cancer, uh, BRCA1, BRCA2, and the ADH, atypical ductal yes. hyperplasia. Yes. Now, when we say it is absolute risk factor, which means at least there is two times more having the breast cancer. While when we say it is a relative one, it is between one to two, okay? If it is yes. between one to two, increased chance is there, it is a relative risk factor. If it is more than two is there, it is the absolute risk factor. Yes. Right, and absolute risk factors are usually non-modifiable, while relative risk factors are the modifiable risk. Modifiable risk. You know, what is the tumor doubling time for a breast cancer? In how many days you get a centimeter lump of the breast cancer palpable? Sir, it is around uh, four to six months. Sir. Doubling time. How many cycles it takes? First, tell how what is the doubling time and how much time does it take to make a one centimeter palpable lump? What is the normal doubling time of the day? Sir, four right. to six, four to six months, sir. It's the doubling time. Yeah, but yeah, doubling time is around 100 it. days, you know? Approximately 100 days is the tumor doubling time. Three months. Okay. okay. And yes. in how many days this one centimeter will be available? From one cell to one centimeter. Yeah, it takes around five years. Okay. okay. It takes around yes. five years to make a centimeter palpable lump. Okay. 29 to cycle. That okay. is cycle you get a two, two centimeters. At what cycle okay. it goes for uh, dissemination, metastasis. Even 20th cycle itself, it can go for dissemination. Even before it becomes yes. a one centimeter mass. Yes. 
you know what is a fisher concept and what is the hostet concept for the breast cancer uh, uh hostedian principle and uh, fisher concept what the is, breast uh, what is yes, the current concept should be considered malignant other otherwise proven what is the current concept just tell the new level idea about hostedian concept and fisher concept current concept is uh, so about the concept uh, minimal uh, uh, surgeries that can be done no, no, no. is it a, surgery is it a, is it a local disease or a systemic, systemic disease, disease. Uh, previously it was considered to be a systemic disease sir oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now no now it's it a is systemic local disease, disease. ियमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिकिसमिक
systemic examination, uh, uh, systemic cardiovascular system and respiratory system of normal finding was seen. Per abdomen, a soft, no free, uh, no free fluid was seen, no organomegaly was there. Uh, per rectal examination, uh, no mass and uh, no normal tone was seen. Uh, central nervous system, no focal neurological deficiency, and the spine, the skeletal system, no spine or long bone deformities present. The summary is a 50 year old uh, post menopausal diabetic female uh, with a painless progressive uh, lump of size 6 cross 5 cm in the upper inner quadrant of right breast, which is firm in consistency, uh, moves with the breast tissue not fixed to the skin and chest wall. And with the ipsilateral, single ipsilateral uh, anterior axillary node uh, with no uh, evidence of metastasis. Uh, so I come with the diagnosis of a carcinoma of right breast uh, with the nodal metastasis and no uh, distant metastasis. T, uh, my staging is T3, N1, M0, and stage 3A, sir. Oh, just uh, go through the picture again. Uh, you said upper uh, inner quadrant. Is it in upper inner yes. quadrant? Yes, sir. Always you have to mention Tarni, the normal breast. Yes, sir. The breast is normal. First, then uh, side. Yeah, okay. first you have to mention normal breast. Normal breast. Uh, yes, sir. I have. Oh, okay. I have mentioned, sir. That is how, okay. How do you make the quadrant of the breast? How do you make the quadrant of the breast? Dividing to four through the nipple, sir. Or crossing through the nipple, imaginary line. Sir, suppose it is a pedunculated breast. In this breast, do you have a, a lower quadrant? Sir, on lying down, it's possible, sir. Recommend position, we can uh, do it, sir. Maybe in the film, uh, we can make out. There is a, some actually in, in between the two folds of the breast, uh, there's a bulge, the atria in this picture. In this picture, yes, actually, sir. we can see that lump. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You said it's weak. Skin is, you said skin is not involved. There is some dimpling we can see, I think. You are sure? Yes, sir. I, yes, my photo. There was no dimpling, such dimpling or uh, any tethering, sir. What dimpling means what? Uh, the, because of the involvement of that uh, Cooper's ligament that, uh, uh, that results in uh, contraction and results in the dimpling, sir, in the skin. Pull of the uh, dermis, sir, it results in the dimpling, sir. You said it's a vague mass uh, on your uh, inspection. You said vague mass. Is it yes, vague? sir. Is so it I couldn't uh, uh, define a clear uh, border, sir. So it, I uh, called it as a vague mass. No. Borders may not be seen, but the mass is definitely obvious mass. Mass is yeah, yes, obvious sir. mass. It's a visible the, mass, actually. Basically, in the elderly people, that two inner quadrant uh, amount of breast tissue is very less. So five to six yes, centimeter sir. lump is obviously it should be visible. You know, it's a quite a big one. Yes, sir. It's vis visible, sir. Normally, outer 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 quadrant uh, large amount of breast tissue is present. Inner is yes, sir, comparatively yes, sir. less. Less, sir. Yes. Sir. But uh, having some irregular surface and irregular border, uh, better not to use the word ovoid in shape. You understand what I'm telling? At least on okay, pulses. You know, some of these examiners, you know, they are very sensitive about this. How can malignant okay, tumor sir. be ovoid like that? You irregular surface, okay. regular border, irregular shape. That's all it is. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I will. You already, you already come to okay. thank you slides. <laughs> yes, no, no. You, you have an inner quadrant mass, and where do you expect the nodal uh, secondary? Sir, inner mostly they uh, go to the internal memory nodes, sir. Have you First, examined from internal uh, memory node? But you have not mentioned anything about internal memory node. Whether you have examined? Sir, uh, internal memory on percussion, uh, if it is prom that much prominent, if it is percussion, it will be dull on the... No, you are, you are, you uh, not, what my intention is, you are not even attempted for that. Whether you will be able to make it out, whether it is accurate is the second question. And yes, where sir. do you expect the node? In which Nodes internal... will be in the sir, second, uh, uh, yes, sir, inter, uh, between the costal cartilages, just behind the sternum, sir. Behind the sternum. If it goes behind the, the sternum, lateral, you can't make lateral... it out. Okay. Uh, yes. And, and what one. space? What space you get commonly? Sir? In which space? That is the... how, many, how many are there intermemory nodes? All intercostal spaces or? 
So you must do that uh, just to find out whether it, now you are made out or it's actually there is a nose because that is yes, if you can clinically if you can find out that that will be much better. Yes, sir. Okay. What are the various changes which can occur in the breast cancer? Sir. What are the various skin changes which can occur in the breast cancer? Um, uh, pudio orange uh, nodules ulceration, sir. Hmm. Sir, um, uh, that's at the most. Uh, like, uh, yes, sir. That's uh, that's a piece. Dimpling. The skin involvement is there. Sir, that oh, skin changes. Oh, yes, sir. I, I thought, sir, it's the skin involvement you're asking. Uh, yeah, tethering, uh, dimpling, puckering can be seen, sir. Uh, and along with that, skin, uh, uh, puree orange or ulcerations and nodules, sir. Its skin is involved. So, if there's a puckering and the dimpling is there, does that change the stage of the disease or not? No, no, sir. No, sir. So, what are the things which change the stage of the disease? The skin changes. The, uh, skin changes, that is the puree orange, sir, and nodulations, ulcerations, sir. Okay. So, you are exactly orange alone? Do you do orange? What do you mean by that? Do you orange changes? Sir, what is beauty orange? Yes, sir. What is beauty orange? Because, because of the subdermal lymphatics, when it is uh, when it gets involved, uh, there is edema and that uh, the hair follicles get uh, deepened. Hmm. So it yes, appears as an orange peel appearance, and it's you are saying only the uh, subcutaneous lymphatics are involved, subcutaneous lymphatics. Will you call that as a skin involvement? Yes. Normal. So is that is that yes, part sir. of skin involvement? Pudio orange. Yes, sir. Because it is in the dermal dermis uh, dermal layer, so it it comes under skin involvement, sir. Oh, because of the obstruction, you get edema. But because of the obstruction, that extravasation of the tumor cells also takes place. That comes to the that direct infiltration comes there. Oh. Only when okay, you have sir. the cells within the uh, lymphatics, and we don't call it as an uh, skin involvement. But pudio orange invariably result because the tumor cells is infiltrated into the the skin okay okay but you get nodules why do you get nodules in the breast why do you get nodules in the breast sir uh, uh, nodules because of the skin infiltration and skin uh, like uh, a skin oh, infiltration you can get nodules it sir. also comes from the lymphatics why not the Met it goes directly to the node why do you want to stay in the skin anything special on the cutaneous lymphatics of the breast Cutaneous lymphatics are mostly zonal. The interconnection between mm -hmm. the adjacent zones are less. Adjacent so when there is some block, then you get a nodules developing in them. Oh. Dr. Tarni, ulceration fungi yes, sir? Is the two words similar yes, sir. or is there any difference between these two terms? Ulceration and fungation in relation to breast lumps. Um, uh, it's a difference, sir. Ulcer is just a beach in the epithelium, sir. So, see, some uh, can ulcerate. For some breast lumps, we use the term fungate. fungate. Yes, sir. Without infiltration, uh, can, something can go for fungation. Without infiltration? These two have two different yes. yes, sir. Fungation, uh, yes, sir. It can go for fungation, sir. Without okay. infiltration. Infiltration and fungation. Sir, what is the difference between ulceration and fungation? On the on the pathogenesis of the mechanism. Sir, uh, ulceration just sits in the breach in the epithelium. We call it as ulceration when the edges okay. take starts to proliferating, and uh, only, only when uh, there is a breach it can proliferate. No, so the basic is ulcer. But sorry, is asking what is the difference? Formation of ulcer. There is a breach in continuity of the lining epithelium. Yes, sir. Different in different pathologies. 
See, when there is underlying malignancy, the malignancy will infiltrate into the overlying skin. That will give rise to ulceration. That means there is a continuity. So if you yes. want examination, if you want to do probing, it will not be possible at the edge of the ulcer. Fungation we do in relation to benign lumps, like in case of pylorus tumor or any big fibroadenoma, giant fibroadenoma, because of overlying oh, yes. network of the skin. It the will be pressure necrosis. Pressure necrosis of the overlying skin. Oh. Isn't it? Oh, that oh. case, oh, yes. you can do probing. Probing can be done at the edge of the ulcer. Oh, yes. These are different. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. Why did you specifically tell us that there is no lump beneath the nipple areola complex? You specifically mentioned that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, why, why if you want the central that? group, which is rare, sir, when it is centrally involved, it is rare. And uh, when we are planning, if we are planning for uh, uh, breast conservation, uh, we cannot go for uh, breast conservation if the nipple areola complex is involved, sir. No, but why you wanted to tell in this patient that there is no lump below the nipple area complex? Uh, uh, sir, uh, um, no, uh, overall, overall breast, uh, whether there is other lumps in the uh, same breast to multi, uh, multifocal, multicentric, I examined, sir. And it's mentioned it, sir. Or you could have said that there is no other lump in the breast, you know, rather than saying specifically about the as a lump, not so specifically, I said just because it's uh, it, a uh, change of plan in the surgery for that. I told sir. for the breast conservation, plan, change uh, yes, of plan of surgery for the breast conservation, yes, sir. If nipple areola is involved, we cannot uh, plan for uh, breast conservation. Now, which other lymph uh, node you are not examined in this patient? You examined on the axillary nodes, you did not tell us about the internal memory. Any other lymph nodes? You said about the supraclaviculars. Yes, sir. Any other lymph node you have to examine? When you, when you say supraclavicular, something else you have to see. When there is supra, what else will be also there? Infraclavicular. Uh, infraclavicular nodes, sir. What are they? So does that make a difference? If there is an infraclavicular node, are there? Yes, sir. They are the... Uh, Yes, sir. It uh, dif uh, differ, uh, makes the staging difference, sir. So you have to tell about that. If it is making the difference in the staging, you have to tell about that. Hmm? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. And you have not done the PV examination in this patient? PV, have... You have done the DRE, yes. but you have not done the PV yes. examination. Have you mentioned yes, that? I, did, I didn't mention. Okay. I just mentioned the PR findings. When you are doing PVPR, which one yes, you will sir. do first? It's the PV, sir. So you missed it, especially the woman. Yes. What, what you want to, to see in the PV examination? It what is, you wanted uh, to see in the PV examination? Sir, uh, it is for the retro, uh, retro uterine uh, pouch we have to see, sir. Any mass is there. Uh, palpable mm -hmm. and uh, for any uh, or anything else or anything else oh. um, woman endometrial thickening that won't be answered. endometrial thickening why no, no, no. we'll feel endometrial thickening but, uh, PV. No, we cannot see. Sir. Can PV. Patient with cancer breast may have no, a. No, it will not be, sir. It will not be, sir. So, for what? Uh, Any other spread? Oh, ovarian, uh, ovarian mass. Uh, that and the through the foreigners, the sir, adenoxyl mass can uh, that can be any palpable, sir. Can you have the ovarian what? mass in the breast cancer or not? Yes, sir. What is that called? What ovarian mass? It's a crook crook and uh, tumor, sir. Yeah, so you can you describe that, that tumor? Describe that crook and tumor. How it will look and uh, mostly it is in the raw area of the serous. Yes, sir. 
is it a unilateral or bilateral is it a smooth surface or a hard surface what's the solid or cystic sir it's a it is unilateral bilateral answer one by one uh, sir ஒன்பாயிரம்ஸ்டிக் <laughs> 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 so bilateral solid lumps smooth lumps which are there which can be because the transilomic spread but now the concept is that it is because of the retrograde lymphatic spread now retrograde lymphatic right bulky bulky they are uh, big ones big, big ones, ones. other than carcinoma breast any other carcinoma can produce crookan bakti marma other than not uncommon it is much more common than the breast breast type one much more common right? from gastrointestinal tract anything you can think there nearer the ovary also stomach ah oh, stomach <coughs> stomach stomach is very common stomach, stomach has almost 13 to 15 percentage possibility is there that to not the advanced tumor it is a early it is from the weak cause that is why well, more in terms of it is cut off as a retrograde lymphatic not the transilomic spread stomach okay. colon yes <clears throat> can you get a primary colon bacteria yes there is an entity called primary colon bacteria also only okay. by the immunohistochemistry you can differentiate the primary or the secondary but the most commonly it is only a secondary tumor is circumbacterial tumor you get yes. you, you by the uh, pv examination you said that is a rectovaginal pouch that is a thickening due to why do you get that um uh, in uh to it the nodes may be positive there sir notes so how do you differentiate that it is from the colonic growth or it is from the external out you, you see a thickening there is it a bulbous cell yes. or the node or it is a, due to the growth from the colon itself that can also produce like a mass lesion there yes what are the different what methods of lymphatic uh, oh, sorry sorry sir no no go ahead sir go ahead What are the different per rectal examination you can differentiate if there is a mucosa is involved in the rectum then this you put the cause as a primary from the colon or the rectum hmm? okay sir what are the different methods of lymphatic spread in carcinoma breast how we treat it from the breast to axilla and axilla to different places do you know uh, so uh, sir i didn't get this one no different methods of lymphatic spread from breast to axilla from axilla to different places so from breast to it is initially to the uh, pectoral uh, group of nodes level 1 no methods of methods of spread how it reaches from the breast to limb, uh, axilla it usually reaches through what is called as lymphatic permeation whereas malignant cells pass crawls through the lymphatic system from there it is usually embolization where malignant get dislodged and travel dislodged. along the limb and again from there it goes to the retrograde spread like what are different places of course rotor's lymph node is basically it retrograde spread so the three method modalities of lymphatic spread in carcinoma okay permeation is along the uh, proliferates yes. along the lymphatic embolization oh, yes. travels in the lymph like a flow and retrograde spread okay so the three methods all three methods are of uh, lymphatic spread is seen in uh, carcinoma breast okay remember all these things one must understand the pathology you have to read pathology that will be more helpful to understand the process of the disease rather than only surgical textbooks okay sir no
can a node go to the cervical node level 2 level 3 cervical node in the carcinoma of breast can you get a node involved in the so suppose uh, so you yes, get a sir. case of the level 3 node is involved so what stage you will put that uh, Uh, it, uh, it is metastatic, sir. Uh, distant metastasis. So, so it is uh, distant metastasis. Yes. Either to the opposite axilla. Or... Yes. So how are you going to proceed? Sir, uh, uh, for, uh, in, for, for the investigation, sir, I will first confirm my diagnosis uh, with the true cut uh, uh, coronal biopsy, sir. And then uh, followed by uh, the screening mammography should be done. Uh, you should have told mammogram first, then uh, you do the coordinator. That coordinator yes, when you just speak yeah. triple first, assessment. First you say, I will do triple assessment in which one you say in that same order you go so that you will not do okay. this. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. Yes, I will go with the triple assessment. Yes, sir. Mammography for the same breast or opposite breast or the both the breast? A mammography uh, for the opposite breast actually, sir. Have you seen ever single breast mammography? Have you seen ever single breast mammography? Mammography, then always both breasts. Both breast. this. Okay, yes. both the breasts. So even though you see it is a mass and you are supposed to look for the mammography here, yeah? for what reason? <laughs> Why do you want uh, to do the mammogram for mammog the same breast? For any other uh, other lesions, like other multicentric or multifocality, uh, we have to look for mammography. Uh, and for screening the other breast, uh, we go for mammographies. Even the volumetric assessment, we cannot do in always two for an MRI. So this also gives you the volume. Yes. When if you are planning for a chemotherapy, then what's the volume response also you can go through the volume because when sometimes suppose it's an inflammatory breast carcinoma you can see the thickness of the skin the cutaneous thickness which will give you a good clue it is very typical of a inflammatory breast carcinoma where you have a large uh, thickened uh, especially in a case you are seeing lymphatic uh, like uh, pd orange there you can see the difference in that. so both the breast you need to do the But you, you have mentioned as a screening for uh -huh. the mammography opposite breast. You are not mentioned for the same breast. That's why I asked you. Tumor breast. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Is the size of the needle coronal biopsy, Darani? What is the gate of the needle? Uh, sir, it is 14-11 or 14-12. 11-11. 11-11, yes. And... Uh, What are, said, study, What are the various views you do for the mammography? Cran cran cranio, so normally, uh, usually cranio caudal and uh, medial lateral, sir. So if you are given a film of the cranio caudal and the medial lateral, how will you know that this is a cranio caudal if it is not written? CC or ML, it is not written there. How will you know it is a cranio caudal view and this is a medial lateral view? You can look at something and say that this is the cranial cordal or the medial lateral. Apart from the breast. Okay, if you see the pectoral so, fold. Uh, bone. Uh, so you will see the pectoral okay. fold or the pectoral major muscle in the medial lateral view and not in the cranial cordal view. So by that you differentiate That whether it is the medial oh, lateral okay. view or the cranial caudal view. If you want to look for the lymph okay. nodes in the mammography, which one you will prefer, cranial caudal or the medial lateral? You want to see the X-ray nodes. Medial, medial laterals, medial laterals. Look in the medial lateral. Right. Which is a blind spot in mammography. Normal routine mammography, one particular. Path of the breast, you cannot uh, identify See. fully. So, begin the nipple area. Nipple. So that is some. So what are the advancements in the mammography you have? 
What is stoma synthesis? Digital mammography, stoma synthesis. Oh. This is a newer thing you have to know. Stoma synthesis. So you have done a mammography. Will you do ultrasonography or only mammography? Sarini, you are... Yes, sir. Will you do only mammography or will you do combined ultrasonography and mammography together? Um, what do you call it? Clinic? We can do sonomammography of the... Yes. Yes, sono memo it is called together. So yes, sir. by the same person, preferably. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Similarly, you must know the advancements in the ultrasonography. Even now, contrast ultrasonography has come. What contrast is used in normal contrast ultrasonography? You have each, each CP, you have a contrast, MRI, you have a contrast. It's a micro bubble here. It's commonly used as well. So you can have a, a resistance you can measure and also the contrast ultrasonography can be done. If there is any role of MRI in this case? No, sir. It's better, uh, will be uh, this, uh, through this uh, sonomammography, we can uh, uh, investigate the patients. So according to your uh, picture, it is a early disease or locally advanced disease or metastatic disease. Sir, so, clinical diagnosis may locally advance the breast disease. T T N M. Sir, T three. T three N one M zero, sir. So locally advanced breast disease T three N one M zero. Keeping that in mind, in addition to after the triple assessment, what next you will do? Is it an operable LADC or not? Uh, what do you mean by operable LADC? Uh, after before, uh, yeah, after that metastatic workup, uh, uh, then I will uh, plan. Uh, it is uh, for me. It is an uh, uh, operable LADC. No, no. What do you mean by it that? All the metastatic. What do you mean by that? L-O-B. Yes, sir. Why it is called so, an operable? operable. Uh, yes, we can excise. Uh, yes, sir. We can excise the tumor uh, with the no, uh, margin means, and yes. we skin, skin approximately. No. Yes, sir. Normally, LABC means we have to give up and first new adjuvant therapy. Yes. Then only you have to go for it. Only condition where if it is a T3, uh, yes, N1. Sir. There is a possibility. Even now, yes, oncologists are trying even for that uh, in uh, new adjuvant therapy. But yes, you are justified new adjuvant, saying yes, that sir. it is an operable. Without new adjuvant, you can directly take the case for the Tomorrow. surgery. What I wanted yes. you to proceed is with the bone scan. That is what I wanted you to answer. And CT uh, yes, yes. chest and abdomen. CT chest but and CT because abdomen. Because you yes. said it is LABC. Before right? to rule out yes, metastatic sir. disease, that is called metastatic workup. Yes. Whereas if it were yes, to be only stage one and two, it is not required unless there are symptoms. Yes. Symp symptomatic disease. That's what yes. I want. This Large lump. You have to do. Yes. So this patient, it is must. Must be T3, no? Yes. You have to do. Yes, sir. Hmm. Next. What is the unit to use in a pet? Sir? What is the unit? What is the measurement they say in which which way? PET scan. PET scan. You have CT, you have hands full unit. Similarly, PET, what is that? And that SUV. Okay. Hands full for the CT. Hands full for CT scan. CT scan. For PET CT, what is the unit system? Sir is asking. They, they normally come on the metabolic activity uh, of the uh, cells. Are there. SUV max. 
Okay, go ahead. Mm. Have you heard Jordan. of specimen mammography? Sir, a sonar mammography? Specimen. Specimen, specimen, specimen mammography. अजय Yes. Martin. We all can mimic uh, uh, different teachers now, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Tar Tarni. We can mark with the clips, uh, sir. No, 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 no. The clip is for the clip is for the cavity. If at all you are doing a, if you want to early, keep inside, early, mm -hmm. early, you know, early carcinoma, you are done a wide excision. You can mark, but specimen. I think margins, margins. specimen, margins, so specimen, specimen, margins. Superiorly, anything you do or laterally, anything you do. That's what is the important. Oh, the okay. Tie the tie. The tie. The short uh, uh, switch length and the uh, lateral. We give the uh, longer one for orientation. Short superior. Short superior. Long yeah. lateral. Yeah. Long, a large space. Usually, if we are not having the skin margin on the anterior side, then you have to put a mark on the posterior side. Okay, then you put the double sutures there, the posterior side. Eh? Normally, you know, if you are not removing the skin, it is not necessary that in the case of breast conservation, you are going to remove any skin. Skin, you don't remove. Okay, so if you are not removing the skin, then you have to put another mark on the posterior side. And there's a double one. Okay. What about medial and inferior? What about medial and inferior? You don't need it, right? Self-explanatory. You don't need it. The other one is once you place the superior yes. lateral, 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 middle and uh, yes, sir. medial and uh, medial and inferior is at the same. So, you, which surgery you will be preferring for this? Sir, uh, since it's an operable, uh, we can go for with the uh, modified radical mastectomy, uh, followed by uh, uh, adjuvant chemotherapy with hormonal and targeted therapy, and then with radiotherapy. Sir. What are the nerves you will prescribe when you are doing the surgery? Uh, nerve to serratus anterior. Yes, sir. How will you identify the nerve? Nerve to serratus anterior. How will you identify the nerve? It will be close to the lateral. Yes, sir. It will be uh, close to the lateral uh, chest wall, sir. Uh, uh, alongside the rib, rib cage, sir. How will you raise the flaps? How will you raise sir, the flaps? Flaps, uh, uh, sir. It will be should should be around point less than one centimeter. That is point seven to point eight uh, uh, centimeter thickness. Uh, up to superiorly up to the clavicle and inferior to oh, the three to four centimeter below the Is there there by your scale that this is 0. 0.7 centimeter when you are raising the flap? How will know? That will be the very, foamy. Very... That a foamy layer uh, will be uh, visible there. Uh, Which foamy layer? Yeah. That no, we will never heard about that foamy layer. What is that foamy layer? Uh, what is what is the difference between the subcutaneous pattern? Breast fat, you know, that's uh, something which you should be able to differentiate. When... Yes. Uh, breast fat will be more uh, lobulated uh, when compared to the subcutaneous fat, sir. It will be bigger, uh, lobe, thicker. You know, small. You have to work between the yes. small lobule and the big lobule. You know? Yes. Big lobule, small yes. lobule is the subcutaneous fat, while the big lobule is the breast fat. Yes. So you have to it's work in between that, you know? So you are not going to measure the skin thickness there, but you have to work in between. Yes. Sir. Now the blood vessels which are coming there, do they go toward the breast side or the yes. skin side? Are you going go to go to the skin side, sir? When raising the flaps, sir. 
preserve the blood uh, blood supply for the skin sir for the flat no they go over the breast side all so, the yes, the contact is going to be preserved. superficial to otherwise, those otherwise flap will get necros yes sir no somehow what happens that these breast vessels which are there they are over the breast fat so you have to work superficial to that not deeper to the blood vessels okay okay i yes so those vessels which are there over the breast fat not over the subcutaneous uh, fat hmm? over the subcutaneous right. so that is the way you raise the flaps i uh, will you identify median pectoral now is it important to preserve the medial pectoral it, it, uh, yes sir uh, it's uh, or else it results in atrophy of the pectoralis muscles it will be in the lateral border of the uh, pectoralis minor muscles sir why it is called as medial pectoral nerve why it is called as medial pectoral nerve since it's the medial uh, branch from the uh, uh, brachial plexus uh, it's called medial pectoral nerve sir. it supplies so the lateral part of the breast Yes, sir. Sir, on the medial cord of the brachial plexus. That's very important. Yes, sir. Okay. If you damage the intercostal brachial nerve, what happens? Kunz nerve. It's only the num. Uh, yes. What happens? Numbness. Is the We sensory? Have... It is. It's only Where? the sensory uh, nerve system. Where will so, be the numbness? Where will be the numbness? Uh, over the lateral chest wall, sir. Chest wall or the chest wall? Brachial, brachium. Brachial means what? Intercostal brachial. Intercostal brachial. Oh, okay. Brachial means what? Which area? Actually, brachial. Arm. Mainly the second intercostal. In the ax. Uh, In the upper middle. Axillary. Brachial means what? Below the axilla, no? Ah uh, yes. Below the, the axilla. Upper and, middle of the upper, 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 upper middle of the arm. 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 If you have seen it crosses the egg, uh, chest wall to axilla, so you can think that if you have seen it in surgery, it literally it crosses is. the uh, fossa. Axillary, yeah, oh, yes. And you may have more than one, you know. Not necessarily only yes. one will be there. There one may be more three. than one nerves, maybe intercostal brachial nerves may be there. Okay. So, what But are the main ways to, to, to prevent the seroma formation in case of the modified radical dissection? What are the ways? It is the most ways? common complication. Yes, sir. Yes. So, only what prevent. are the main ways? Yeah. Uh, 50, uh, it occurs in mostly 50 to 70 percentage of the uh, mastectomy uh, MRM done. Yes. Uh, to prevent it, we keep uh, uh, drains, uh, suction drains, uh, so that we can uh, remove it. No, uh, uh, you don't prevent it by keeping a drain. Drain by keeping a drain, it will come Just, out. Just uh, we uh, yeah, let formation. it out. Uh, Even formation of seroma, can you? Is there is any steps to prevent that? Uh, we can. Uh, Uh, suture the inner uh, flap to the pect uh, yes sir flap to the pectoralis muscle we can suture it so that uh, the space will be reduced and uh, collection will be less sir and we can give compressive uh, dressings yes yeah, so you can fix the flaps to the underlying muscles yes you sir. can glue that you should not work above the axillary vein Yes. You should try to avoid the diathermy as much as possible, and try to ligate the lymphatics as much as possible. So you should try to ligate those. That probably can reduce the seroma formation. And then there are things that the type of the drain which is there you are putting, whether you are going to give a full suction or half suction or no suction. No suction. Best has been probably the half suction drain rather than giving yes. a full suction. If you do a half suction, probably there is less chance of the relatively less seroma will be there. Oh yes. Compared to thyroid and uh, breast, where do you get uh, drains for a longer period of time? 
have you seen it have you uh, seen a mastectomy have you seen a mastectomy done yes sir. yes average yes, average any idea how many days keep a drain drain sir uh for five to seven days we can keep it off for 10 days even if it is required so so, so in, especially in the breast where you have an axilla there will be tendency yes. to for, collect to be uh, yes sir about more than a week keep longer time yes. drain so that is why we tend to send them along with the drain actually home yes. you know, then they will come after some time once it reduces So there's nothing like you remove the drain on third day, fourth day, fifth day. Don't say that in the exam. The purpose of yes. the drain is to drain. So best is to say when the drain stops draining, in the sense it may range. Okay, ten ml, twenty ml, every day count. That's not the answer. Because some people also use a small ball in the axilla, like you know, make a cotton ball and keep. All those things are done. Yes. But yes. Whatever you do, it will. It is going to drain for about a week or so. Maybe some time more. Then the person should do the shoulder exercises. Right? Correct. It is not that you will do the yes. section of that. No, he should carry out the active exercises. That also reduces yes. the serum yes. opening. So being a lady, for the best way to say no, ask her to comb her hair. You know, this is the best way for a shoulder exercise. Oh, okay. Not that touching the opposite side. Touching the opposite shoulder. Yes. This is the best way. Okay. So then. You have done the surgery and the postoperatively and the histology. What are the things you are going to look for for deciding your further management? Uh, postoperative, uh, sir. With the you have done the surgery. Uh, now you are done for the histology. What are the things you are going yes, to look sir. for? Sir, uh, in that uh, tumor margins, we will look for the margins, sir. Um, so and the uh, IHC markers study. we can look in that so for uh, starting hormonal or uh, targeted therapy sir and uh, uh, and yes sir will you look for the grade of the tumor will you look for the number of nodes yes i sir sorry ah, yes number of nodes and also get the involvement node involvement important oh. yes sir. because that is the deciding factor as yes, far sir. as uh, prognosis is considered Suppose, here, here, or to new case, it is even also you have to check markers. Yes. Yes. So, what adjuvant therapy? Sir, uh, now adjuvant <coughs> chemotherapy. Uh, so, and uh, chemotherapy so, uh, drugs means it uh, now recently. Uh, 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 ad, uh, adriamycin and uh, along with uh, taxin groups, paclitaxel they are more preferred. Uh, uh, when compared stage, to previous. At, at this stage, if you can say, sir, at, I will classify them luminal A, B, C, or like that, triple negative. Then proceed with we'll better uh, better weightage in the examination. Have you you know that? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You only so said based that on the markers, I mean, the histochemical markers. Uh, when both so, are H E R P R positive, H E R negative, it is luminal A. And uh, uh, so, so you yes. say that in the exam. I would like to know okay, the E R status, okay. P R status, R two status, B S L triple yes. negative. So this is accordingly. Then I will proceed with the these are the drugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Suppose this patient is a T3, so patient has ERPR positive, hmm. and still, if there is any role of chemotherapy, or will you have all the cases with the ERPR positive, you will go only for the hormone therapy. Therapy. You is it? Do you know T3 lesion? Sir, yes, sir. If it is ER uh, uh, ER uh, ERPR positive, uh, means. Uh, Prognosis uh, will be better with this hormonal therapy only, sir. So you won't so give me that. Uh, we can add. <laughs> no, no, you are not giving me that. Actually, chemo for uh, for uh, for lesions which is more than one centimeter, chemotherapy should be given, sir. One centimeter. That is T1 lesion. T1 lesion. One centimeter. Yes, sir. Why is one okay. centimeter lesion? If you are going to do the breast conservative <laughs> surgery, which <laughs> country? Why you will do the master tummy? Then you give the key, uh, local sir, I'm asked, uh, sir, about 
yes sir, sir about chemotherapy sir when they we consider it to be a systemic spread so we start, start chemotherapy sir joint chemotherapy for the patient no both you are getting hormonal ther- no, one he and please understand uh, hormonal therapy also it's a systemic therapy chemotherapy also yes, systemic sir. therapy so when the erp are positive 1 cm tumor i will only go for a hormonal therapy not the chemotherapy chemotherapy more yes, than 5 cm more than 5 cm or okay. more than uh, the high grade tumor or even nodes are positive yeah this what is the size yeah. of tumor here so clinical 6 into 5 uh, yeah. sir so naturally give chemo then you give hormone okay? uh, always you have to give sequentially you never call, do a con- concurrent yes, chemotherapy and hormone therapy you which one you give first ma oh. chemo or hormonal which one you give first so we start on uh, chemotherapy first this time Finish of chemotherapy, then you give hormone therapy and continue the hormone therapy. That is how exactly. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Radiotherapy and chemotherapy can be given concurrently, but not hormone therapy and chemotherapy. Hormone therapy is to be kept at the end. Okay. Ah uh, yes, sir. Okay. What hormone therapy you prefer for your age, your patient? <laughs> Since it's a post-menopausal woman, actually. Uh, Aromatous inhibitors uh, can be given, sir. But uh, it is said that tamox uh, tamoxifen is better for both premenopausal and postmenopausal, and that can be started. Uh, What is the dose of tamoxifen? How long will it give? Uh, sir, tamoxifen it is twenty uh, mg uh, for uh, five years, sir. OD for five years, sir. For all. Both pre-menopausal, post-menopausal, all five years. Uh, sir, no, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, for pre- no. uh, after after we have to give initially for the five years. Then uh, again, if the patient is pre-menopausal, we have to again give tamoxifen for another five years, total ten years. And if as she become post-menopausal, we have to change. We can change it to uh, uh, aromatase inhibitors or tamoxifen, sir. faculty can yes, we sir. call a close yes sir we'll uh, wind up sir okay uh, arani do you have any questions or doubts to be asked and clarified with the national faculty uh, uh, so thank you so much and sorry for all the inconveniences that i made oh no that's okay that is their part of the system don't worry you have presented well we had a good discussion also very nice uh, thank you everybody thank you sir kana sir kanagwe sir radio